What's up guys? Welcome back to Country Bunkers Trains. Hope everybody's been having a good week. I did get the MTH Kansas City Southern SD70 Ace out of the box this week. Awesome engine. But we'll save that one for an upcoming video. I can't wait to show you all that one. I love it. It's post-war week on the, uh, the channel this week. And we've got another Lionel Classic coming up. Today we're going to take a quick peek at the Lionel 2350 New Haven EP5. Gorgeous little engine. Obviously I don't model any particular or singular road name or railroad. However, if I was going to, it would probably be the New Haven line. I love the paint schemes on these engines. The orange, white, and black is simply stunning. At least to me. <laughs> Here's my FA for comparison. Just great looking. I love it. Very eye-catching and appealing. I haven't been including a whole lot of information on the real engines these toys are modeled after. If that's something you guys would like to see in these videos, please let me know in the comments. I might be the uh, the odd one out in the hobby. As much as I enjoy the, the O-Gage trains, I'm not really a huge rail fan. I don't go out of my way digging through all the history and go take pictures of the real trains running around. It's just not my thing. Sure, I enjoy it, and I think it's pretty cool, but I'm more into the toy aspect of it, or the model aspect of it, if you will. But again, if that's something you guys would like to see in these videos, please let me know. I'd be happy to include it. The 2350 was available for two years. It was produced between 1956 to 1958. It is equipped with a sheet metal frame and plastic body and features a three position E unit, magnet traction, a single vertical mounted motor known as a Pullmore motor, <clears throat> an operating horn, dual working uh, couplers, operating couplers, Headlights on each end, which also illuminate the number boards. Also, as you can see, the engine has two pantographs on the top. And these are actually operational if you'd like them to be. You can rewire the engine to pick up its power from these. I read or heard rumors on uh, the forums and people talking that Lionel was thinking about coming out with a, uh, a catenary system for these way back in the 50s. However... That never came to be, obviously. That'd be a pretty cool thing to see. I can't imagine trying to build it and upkeep it, but I think it would be pretty impressive. There were several different variations of this model throughout the two-year production run, mainly revolving around the paintwork. Lionel started these models off by painting the emblems on the noses of these, However, quickly discovered there were issues with the paint, so they quickly switched over to stick-on decals, which is what you see here. This is the most common uh, variation of sorts. The hardest-to-find variation has an orange N, a black H, and orange New Haven script on the side. These are quite scarce and hard to find. The more common, and which you see here, has a white N, orange H, and white New Haven script on the side. There's also another variation, again, the same exact script as I just mentioned, but again with painted and decaled applied emblems on the front. You can see the decals on this engine starting to peel up in the corners a little bit. I'm honestly not sure if these are the original decals or not. They still look great and they match the rest of the engine. Even if they are replacements, I'm, I'm not upset about it. Again, I'd rather have it look good than a bunch of nasty, peeling-off decal. Lionel came out with two more EP5s in 1957. The 2351 Milwaukee Road and 2352 Pennsylvania. As mentioned in a previous video, I do have a Milwaukee Road, but she's in pretty rough shape. Maybe we'll do a restoration video of her in the future.
Just as my other single motored post-war units, this one struggles a little bit on my MTH reel tracks. It's best suited for the, uh, the steel tubular track for the magnet traction to bite in. Having a stamped steel frame, this engine doesn't quite have the heft of a die cast frame F3. However, in that same vein, I'm pretty impressed with how much this little engine can pull. I'd have to say this is probably my nicest running post-war engine. It's nice, smooth, and quiet, and runs great. I picked this engine up at a local train show. In fact, this is the only engine I found at a local show that I went there looking for. I went there looking for this one and a uh, the 2245 Texas Special. I didn't find the Texas Special, but I did come across a vendor with two of these. This was the nicest looking one that he had. It's not perfect, it doesn't have its original box, but I still enjoy the hell out of it. You can see it's got a little warpage on the top, and nicks here and there in the paint. But again, she's 70 years old. Being a single motored unit, I'm not really sure which side is considered the front. <laughs> However, I have discovered this one seems to run the best with the motor in the rear truck. Rear wheel drive, if you will. When the uh, powered truck's on the front, it seems to have quite a bit of body roll going around the, uh, the curves. Anyways, guys, here she is. Unfortunately, when I built this layout, I didn't take electric engines into account. She's really only stuck to uh, two lines that she can run on normally, which is this 031 loop in the middle and this upper loop up here. I had to take out this uh, support over here to run it on this track. Oh well. I hope you guys enjoyed this little look into the 2350 from Lionel. If you did, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It would be much appreciated.
Until next time, guys, I'm Zach, and this is Country Bunkers Trains. Y'all take care. See you next time.